Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. We hope you enjoyed that beautiful video by Peter. Soldier is the title of that one. Now it's time for us to literally light up our studio with the project coordinator of Light Up Nigeria. His name is Enemona Adaji. Now Light Up Nigeria is an award-winning organization whose mission is to ensure access to affordable, reliable, and sustainable energy for all. The objective of the organization is to use locally sourced and recycled materials to teach people how to assemble and install street lights and solar bottle lanterns for homes. And he's with us to talk more about the project, how exactly they are lighting up Nigeria, and what the plan for the future is. Thank you for joining us, Enemona. Thank you for Thank having you me. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you for you. having me. So what actually birthed the Light of Nigeria organization? How did it start? We hear you're the pro project coordinator. How did um, it all start? So it all started last year. Um, the project is a grassroots movement. It's a global movement that started in the Philippines. So the idea is to use everyday local materials that can be gotten locally to teach um, the locals on how to make solar lanterns. And we saw it move from the Philippines to Brazil, and we were like, if this can work there, it can also work in Nigeria. So we are a team of passionate Nigerians, and we came together um, in Nottingham, and we decided to come over to Nigeria and also try to implement the same thing here in Nigeria. So last year we were here, we were in Makoko, and there we like empowered the youths and taught them how to make the solar lanterns themselves. So what makes us different is the fact that we actually teach the youths in the community on how to make these lanterns. So this year we've taken it a step further and we are making street lights in local communities. So um, we, are, we just finished in Isaliko and now we are in an island here in Lagos. It's called um, Tomaron. There's no access to electricity there. So it's over the water. I think uh, the Milan easy Bridge way. Access? No, no, no. It's behind Takwa Bay. It's a village there, and they don't have electricity. So what we've been doing there since Friday last week is um, teaching the local community, the youths. Um, we got access from the Oba, and we are there to teach them the simple technology on how to make um, solar lantern, like solar street lights. So what makes us unique is that we don't just come and install the lights and go. So they are the ones that are building the lights. So when you talk about sustainability, should in case it gets bad when we are gone, you know, they can actually fix it. And if they want to take it a step further, they can actually mobilize themselves as a community to actually light up the entire island. Brilliant. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. And I say that because I was just going to ask you about the sustainability of it, but I can tell. So you're a social enterprise then yes. as you're working on this. That's great. Now, the United Nations seventh sustainable development goal focuses on renewable energy. Exactly. How Do you believe that this is a project that can really take Nigeria towards achieving that? and actually having 24-hour electricity nationwide by 2030. Okay, so like you said, this is in line with the SDGs, um, well, poverty elevation and um, access to affordable um, energy. energy. Yeah. So what we are, we know the deficit in Nigeria um, regards to electricity, basically. This is um, the liter of light movement. It's just like to serve local communities, basically, rather than being in total darkness. Because, like I said, in Tomaro, they don't have access to any mm. form of electricity. So this is just to help, like, the market women who um, sell on the island and come, like, on the mainland and go back to the island in the middle of the night and there's no access to electricity. You know, when we talk of security on the island, mm. um, in the middle of the night, everywhere is pitch black. And, you know, they, they go to bed very early because there's no light. So, um, like, in the long run, we, we hope to develop the technology further to be able to serve, like... Um, like bigger appliances and all that, but like we are building this movement from the bottom up, Brilliant. not top bottom. So Brilliant. we are um, working on it with the local communities and uh, we involve them in every decision making basically. And it suits their own narrative, where they want the lights to be installed, you know, where do they feel um, it's, it's needed, you know, the busy places where people use to like um, come back to their houses at night or the marketplace. So these are the key places we are focusing on. So we didn't just come and lay the rules. We are working with them to actually decide on what we do and how to achieve our goals. In doing this, have there been any resistance by the locals? If not, what are the challenges that you'd say you've faced so far? 
Um, well, getting to the island itself <clears throat> was a challenge because uh, most of us um, are not used to transport like on water because we have to use the boat to get to the island. But they've been welcoming. And the thing is, they, they, they are really open-minded and eager to learn because, um, you know, there's no um, reason to segregate anyone. So we welcome everyone from the guys, the ladies, everyone are part of the, the training process. And to be fair, they, they actually are fast learners. So I myself, my background is public health and, and epidemiology. I know nothing about engineering. But, you know, if I can do it, you know, anyone can do it basically because it's just like the technology is simple. So um, the first few days was training. And now basically what we are doing on the island is actually installing from today. Um, we installed like two to just test that the, everything was OK on Saturday. But from today, you know, the, we, we've started like rolling out and installing the street lights basically. That's amazing. That's honestly amazing. Now, beyond that, you said that you understand the deficits and you're working based on the deficit when it comes to energy in Nigeria today. And Amana, let's speak about that deficit. Give yeah. us the facts. Give us the statistics. What exactly is the current situation that we are looking at in Nigeria today? And what do we need to see enacted at a government level in order for us to start progressing beyond that? Okay, um, so there's a correlation between like uh, energy, like access to energy and poverty elevation. Mm. We, we've seen the way like China elevated a lot of its population from poverty. Um, they, they, because they like provided cheap energy and access of, to this energy to its population. You know, today, um, China and India were the, the, I think the largest contributors to global poverty like um, a few years back. But now that narrative has changed now. Um, India are now like, the forefront of elevating its own population from poverty. And now Nigeria has overtaken them when it comes to poverty. And you see that in, in line with energy, there's a correlation between lack of energy and increase in poverty. So what the government needs to do, first of all, before we say, OK, the, the economy is, is favorable for investment, you know, there are basic things that need to be sorted out, like energy is very, very important to be able to encourage investors to come and invest in the economy here in Nigeria. Because they, they, most of the companies that leave Nigeria you know, go to neighboring Ghana to set up their companies there because the electricity situation in Ghana, um, I'm sorry to say, is better than... No, but it's the, the truth. Yeah, <laughs> it's better than what we face here in Nigeria. And these companies spend more money you know, to put on their generators. They spend more money on diesel. And we need these companies here because um, it's manufacturing, it's industry that provides jobs for the, for the local people. So I feel the government needs to invest more, like, um, in the world, they Making are... Making the environment conducive enough yes, for Yes, exactly. And investors. energy is key. You know, most countries are innovating to, you know, they are not just relying on old technologies when it comes to electricity. You know, they are now going um, nuclear... Um, they are going using renewable energy, but the point is to provide um, clean energy that is accessible to all. But in Nigeria, we still depend on like old technologies. There's little to no innovation in the energy space on the energy sector here. We're still Nigeria. using lots of generators, popularly known well, as hyper tapas. <laughs> that's the mainstream in Nigeria. Let's yeah. talk about um, global warming and climate change. It yes. is a conversation that we cannot avoid being a part of because mm. everybody in the world is looking for clean energy everybody's looking for alternative renewable energy but nigeria doesn't seem to be keen into that we're still using the same old techniques and my question is why are we not exploring solar energy you are teaching people how to use solar energy to power their lamps and do street lights everybody's talking about clean energy but why are we not yet jumping in on that conversation the thing I see is, the, I'll say, the first generation solar engineers that came or that started the solar movement in Nigeria, they left a negative stigma in the people here in Nigeria because of the substandard products that were imported into the country. So most people, I think including my own family here in Nigeria, when you talk solar, they feel like uh, it's not going to work. But, you know, the thing is... Back in the UK, they have little to no sunlight compared to Nigeria, but solar does work. You see other parts of the, um, the world, solar works. But you know, when you talk about solar in Nigeria, it's like, uh, no, it's to not To be something... fair, though, it's starting to change. People yes. are starting to have solar panels. Exactly. But it's not to the intensity in which we see it in other developed yeah. countries. Yeah, because um, my experience in it other countries... Cheap. 
Yeah, sorry? It's not cheap. Yeah, well, but that's where the government comes in. Yeah. You know, when you talk of, like, subsidies, the government can help and, you know, give people, in, like, incentives to, to go solar, yeah. basically. But there's no incentive in Nigeria. It's a private thing. If, if, if you um, see the need and how it improves the environment and you can afford it, then you go solar. But the thing is there's no encouragement from the government uh, at all to even subsidize anything relating to renewable energy. So it's a personal... Um, choice and a personal thing to do. And then does that fall back to the fact that because that works best in their interest and not necessarily in the interest of the people? I guess when you look at the importation of generators into Nigeria, mm -hmm. the market is bigger than me and you. So mm -hmm. when you say you want to make power constant by providing maybe renewable energy, even in Lagos we are close to the sea so you can you know harness the wind and provide energy using wind energy. You know, things like this I, would actually challenge you know, those who are in that Cabals. space, yeah, and, and the status quo. So I guess that's why it's a no-no and a no-go area. But, you know, we are trying to promote sustainability because even on the island, um, the main technology was built, like, we use um, metal poles uh, to put the street lights on it. But when we got to the island, we noticed that, no, it's not really in keeping with the island. So we decided to use, like, local bamboo sticks, mm. you know, to put the street lights on it. And it, it works perfectly. So, Creative. yeah, what we're actually trying to tell the youths or to teach the community is you can just use everyday materials around you to actually light up your okay. community. What are these materials? Tell us what it takes to actually create a street lamp from scratch. Okay, well, um, first of all, like I said, I'm not an engineer, so, but I've done this myself. You need a solar panel, basically. Um, the solar panels, well, ev everything we've used can be bought in the Arena shopping complex in Oshodi. I've been there like several times since I got back, and that's where we get some, like, some of our materials, basically. You need the solar panels, and you need like, lead acid batteries. Like, those are the two core components you need. Then you need resistors, you need connection blocks, and you know, a basic flow diagram of how the technology works. And with a little explanation, like anyone can put them together, basically. We're hoping that in the nearest future you would will start to see more of what you're doing, not just amongst adults, yeah. but taking it to the schools so that we can catch them young. Back in the day, we used to have jet clubs. Yeah, yeah you do a lot of all these experiments. We're hoping you would take this to schools. What is the plan for Lighter of Nigeria? Um, we, we want to do more in communities and in schools, like you said. So um, we all want to do good, but to do good, you need funds, basically. Um, the project has been like um, supported mainly by our university, and they believe they have that. Okay, these these um, passionate youths want to do something good back home in their countries, which is something. So your university in the UK. Yes. Is sponsoring. Yeah, they are, they are the main funders of this project, basically. So um, to all our listeners, you know, I know well, after the project last year, we got like a lot of interest from communities. Come do this in our community, come do this in our community, but there's just little we can do. So um, like corporations and companies, you, you, you can do this as a form of CSR, like a corporate social responsibility, you know, if you want to give back to a community where well, you work. Well, every private and, company should yeah. partake in some form of CSR. CSR, exactly. So if they want to give back to the community, if they want to do something nice, you know, they can contact us. We're all over social media and we can work with them, you know, to either come to the communities or schools, like you've said, to actually teach people on how mm -hmm. to, you know, make this. The, the ingenuity here is, apart from teaching them on how to light up their community, the smart ones can turn it into a social enterprise themselves. They can turn it into a business and actually make it better than we have taught them yeah. because, you know, they are... Some of these kids are more creative than we are. They're coming so, crows. Yeah, yeah, they exactly. They're literally breeding crows. Yeah, exactly. And that's what we need to see in Nigeria. We need to see the maximization of the potential mm. of our youth. And it's brilliant to have you at the forefront of that. What are your social media handles for people that want to find out more information? Yes, yeah, so on Facebook, we are Lita of Light Nigeria. And Instagram is LOL underscore Nigeria. Um, Laugh out loud. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's Lita of Light Nigeria. I, I guess if you just Google Lita of Light Nigeria, it, it will come up. And our website is www.litaoflightnigeria.org. Are you open to accepting volunteers as well? Yeah, and we are help? working with local volunteers, Brilliant. like on ground. Yeah, so basically it, we, we partnered with um, some schools to get, you know, students mm -hmm. as well here in Nigeria. So it, we are not just doing it alone, obviously we can't. So we've recruited local, local people here in Lagos to work with us. Yeah. So, all right, so more hands are indeed very welcome. If you're thinking you're out there, you're thinking of how to give back, 
to your country, to your community, to the world, then this is a perfect opportunity. If you want to partner with them anyway financially or you just want to render your services, you can connect with them on social media on yeah. all the handles. Thank you so much for joining us, Nemona. Thank you for How having me. How can people me. follow you personally? Oh, um, on Twitter, I'm conf confidence001. Yes, and on Facebook, I'm Nemona Emmanuel Adaji. All right. Brilliant. Thank, Thank you very much for Thank joining you. us. Thank you. Thank you very to enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.